So my name's Lee Brandt. I'm a developer advocate at Okta, and I'm here with uh, Matt Rabel, who's also a developer advocate at Okta. And uh, today we're going to talk about what it's like to be a developer advocate. So Matt, let's start with something simple. What is a developer advocate? What are they, what are they supposed to be doing? So a developer advocate is just an example programmer. <laughs> an example programmer. <laughs> All right, that's what I tell people. Basically, you're, the idea is that you're advocating your company or its products to developers. And okay. so I like to think of this as what I was doing before I joined Okta. I had you know, an interest in various open source projects. I would learn how to use them or I'd use them myself. And, uh, and then I would develop talks for conferences and I would go talk about you know, that open source project, how I used it and the story about how it worked for me. Well, now that I joined Okta, it's pretty much the same thing but I'll just show how to use Okta as like five minutes as part of the talk as well. So it's, it's really advocating something that you're passionate about. And then if you can sneak your company's product in there as well, then great. <laughs> okay, cool. I always tell people it's like being a programmer, except for I changed having one big deadline deliverable to having 500 small uh, deliverables each week. Right. There is that. <laughs> Uh, so what's, what's a typical day like? What do you do during the day? So there's two typical days, right? One is when you're on the road and one is when you're at home. So obviously these times we're at home and I prefer to be at home. So uh, I typically wake up, you know, I have my kids 50% of the time. So when we have them and they actually have school, it's a little earlier day, right? I wake up about six, I make them breakfast about seven. You know, my son is uh, is in driver's school or training to get his, you know, permit. So I'll drive them and uh, and then come back. So sometimes I don't get started till nine, but when I don't have them, you know, I'll get started at eight. Um, I'm one of those bad habit people where I'll start with email. And I know that uh, it's not a great way to start because it can derail your day. But I like to have zero unread messages. I'm one of those type of people. Um, I don't always respond to everything. Sometimes I'll star them. But I'll start with like maybe an hour of that, and then they'll be, you know, checking Slack. They'll be checking uh, maybe our developer forums to see if I can answer anything on there. And then I typically have a task, and I try to start that at you know 10 or sometime in the morning. And that's either maybe writing an example app for a blog post, or maybe I've already written the example app, so now I just have to work on the blog post. Or maybe I'm shooting a screencast like this one to put on our Okta developer channel. Now. There's also days where I just completely work with the team in the sense of um, I'm just on Slack, I'm always available, I'm looking at our developer forums, and I don't actually plan on getting anything done that day. And I like to have days like that because then you're not frustrated at the end of the day. You're like, hey, it's five o'clock, I'm done, right? I did everything that I was supposed to do. Um, but if it's one of those days where I'm you know, writing a blog post or shooting a video, uh, as sh soon as I'm done with that, I try to go on a bike ride or just get out of the house, take the dogs for a walk, and uh, you know, basically just clear my head a bit because you know it can be intense when you're, you know, writing those blog posts or example apps or even the screencast. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that we also do is we advocate for the developer inside our organization too. So what's what's that like? What's that ab about? Well, a lot of that is on Slack in answering questions related to customer identity in the sense of people will be asking about features or maybe SDKs and whether they support something or how they do something. And so a lot of that support happens on Slack, a little bit via email, but you know, just trying to help people out that maybe you know, tried to make something work and couldn't make it work. And that was another reason I created uh, Octodev Schematics. It's a schematics open source project that basically can create a new like spa app and then integrate Okta in under a minute. And so for me, it was because I was tired of just doing that all the time, right? You had to go and modify three or four files. So having something automated to do it for you helps a lot. And so even when helping people internally, I'll be like, hey, can you try this, right? Here's three commands, run these. And if this works, then you know it's not our SDK, you know it's something in your app. Okay, so what happens if they, if they find something in the SDK or if the SDK doesn't work for their particular 
scenario or maybe it's supposed to work, but it, there's a bug in the SDK. What are you supposed to do then? So if it's an external person, usually I'll try to get them to log a GitHub issue. And then that uh, gets more visibility to the people that actually work on the SDKs. And then maybe I'll even ping the person that works on the SDK and be like, hey, you know, I was able to reproduce this. Um, do you think we can fix it? Or do you have a timeline? And, you know, typically in open source, it's very commonplace not to have timelines, right? Like yeah. we'll release when we release. So, you know, it can be tough to get that. But if it's a critical issue, they'll usually fix it, you know, that week. Okay. So what's, what's your favorite thing about being a developer advocate? Well, the finishing, right? Like you said, we have deadlines, right? <laughs> Instead of having, you know, one deadline a quarter or one a month, we have deadlines every week. And so, uh, so it does, it is kind of draining, right? But when you finish that blog post or you finish that screencast, there is a, a certain sense of like, yes, I'm done, right? I did it. And uh, it's just like giving a talk at a conference, right? Same thing. Like when you're done with that talk, it was just like, <sighs> it's just that calming feeling. Now you get to go out and have beers with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what's the worst thing about being a developer advocate? The deadlines are always there, right? <laughs> like uh, there's always a blog post to write. There's always a screencast to shoot. And, uh, you know, it's tough to have a week where you're just like, I don't really have a whole lot of cognitive load, right? And I think, uh, I think the no traveling thing um, maybe increases that. Because before when we travel, like, you know, next week, maybe I was going to DevOps France. And so, you know, I might review some contractor posts or do some editing or, you know, QA some stuff and make sure a certain blog post works. But as far as like me writing a blog post or shooting a screencast, you know, when you're on the road, you just, you don't have time for that. So it's almost a break, but then you also have to speak, right? Which is very like, you know, anxiety ridden. So, uh. So it's, it's weird not having, you know, that break. But at the same time, I was planning on taking a year off from travel starting in July of this year. And so this is kind of just, you know, a few weeks early. So <laughs> there's, there's just a lot. And what I've learned is uh, we have this app now that Okta provides called Headspace. And I don't use it enough. Um, but when I have used it, it's, it's been pretty nice. It basically, like, helps you clear your mind, right? It's only, like, 10 minutes. But it's a sort of meditation where it's, like, you know, you don't have to you know, worry about the stuff in the future all the time. Just kind of embrace the present and uh, be happy with where you are. Nice. So how did you become a developer advocate? Kind of by accident. I was a, uh, I was, like I said, I was doing it for open source. The first talk I ever did was in 2004 at Apache Con in Las Vegas. And it was comparing web frameworks, right? And back then it was the Java web frameworks that were, very popular. So it was like struts and spring MVC and tapestry. And I enjoyed the conference experience and it seemed like I was kind of good at speaking. So I would do a few a year and I was an independent consultant at the time. So what I found was if I did something that compared various technologies, chances are I might get a client out of that or someone would contact me and they'd say, Hey, I saw you comparing these and we're thinking about adopting this. Would you like to come help us? And so there was a year in there where I stopped doing it. I think it was maybe 2008 or 2009, like I wasn't, I didn't travel for a whole year and I found that it kind of dried up my pipeline, right? Not having that presence out there and that, that marketing. And so I started doing it again and then I ended up joining Stormpath as a contractor only working uh, half days. So I'd work for computer associates in the morning, I had a contract with them doing JavaScript, afternoon was uh, Stormpath doing Java. And after about six months, they were like, we'd like you to come on board full time. And I was like, mm, I like contracting. And then they were like, well, you could be an evangelist. And I was like, well, that sounds fun. I'll do that. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's all, you know, and then they bought uh, Octobot Stormpass. So that's how I ended up there. Nice. Well, and I always tell people that one of the cool things about this job is you get to mess around with the cool new stuff and then show other people how to do it. Um, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you have to go back and write a blog post on how to use Okta with some really ancient technology. Like maybe, SAML. <laughs> that maybe you've forgotten about how to use. So right. um, that can be a challenge as well. Okay, so... Well, what I love to tell people is I only test in Chrome. <laughs> right? That's the best part of the job. Yeah. 
so thanks, Matt, for joining me today. I hope this is helpful for somebody. Um, if you're looking at becoming a developer advocate or uh, maybe you're, you've got an offer to be a developer advocate and you don't know whether or not to take the job, um, this may be helpful in helping you decide whether or not it's for you. Um, thanks again for joining me and uh, we'll see you guys later. See ya.